best way to attack a hand, I would say. You start with the uh, on top of the nice. Uh, certainly previously enjoyed the uh, uh, shop towel. And uh, want to clean all the carbon out of there. And uh, I'll get that going off camera in a second once uh, we go through a few details. Um, don't want this video to be too long. It's already going to be long. Um, get the first bit of carbon off, you can even use a, like a hobby knife. Yeah. So there we are with the, uh, with the parsley cleaned. Um, you can probably see that there's a few scratches, uh, three light scratches in it from that kind of cleaning. Not too, too worried because uh, what we're going to do is we're going to shave down the, uh, the shrouding a little bit around the spark plug. What shrouding is, is uh, basically the uh, metal here making too much of a pocket for a spark plug and uh, what happens at speed is that uh, sometimes the gas is in that pocket don't fully ignite and you get a few little droplets of, uh, of fuel build up in there and then you get a cold spot um, so to uh, relieve that what you do is just down along here if there's a definite ridge um, just want to sort of round that ridge off so that it's just smooth flow going in there. You won't worry too much about the decompressor. This one sealed up uh, really nice. When I did the voluming, I also indicated up here the actual volume of it when I uh, test the volume so that uh, I don't mix it up with another head because uh, once I've machined this down, uh, that volume will be different for sure. So, uh, we want to do this, uh, rework in here next, before we attack the mating surface here. If you're not going to be doing anything to the mating surface, what you want to do is you want to get some duct tape, put duct tape onto the mating surface, clean it well first, put duct tape on it so it's stuck there, and then carefully cut out the area around here in that circle. So that when you get in there and you start cleaning it out, you're making it pretty. If, uh, if your Dremel or whatever you're using decides to do the dance of death and go outside the lines, it's not going to put a nice big uh, score into the, uh, into the uh, mating surface. Um, so you won't be losing compression uh, after you try to do a, a better than a stock job. So uh, we'll get this going in a second here. So, keeping in mind that this lovely, uh, lovely silvery part here is aluminum, and aluminum is a nice soft metal. So, I'm going to start a little bit of a butcher job here, and this is uh, this is one of those quirky little hobby knives. And uh, I bought the good one there, the, the nice old school metal ones, uh, just because they they hold the blade a little bit tighter. Then I, uh, I only extend the blade uh, uh, just by two notches, only enough just to get in there. Uh, because the longer you make the blade, the better chance there are a little bugger snapping on you, and you don't want that. Now, you just have to go very carefully. Remember that uh, sometimes when you got a new blade, that the uh, aluminum is a little bit softer than you expect. And it's a heck of a lot easier to uh, take aluminum off than it is to put it back on. So uh, take your time and uh, just shave at that ridge a bit. And uh, once you knock the corner off, and you can get in there with some uh, some uh, nice 220 uh, plumber's cloth and uh, make it all nice and uh, nice and pretty smooth. Dremel on this, but uh, in no rush, in no rush to make mistakes. Um, not saying the folks will, but I, just, uh, I like 
taking the slow way that I've been doing for years. When you're old, you got time to kill, I guess. Next, we just want to shave down the lumps on either side. Just want to put it more around so you can shave a bit off with your knife to begin with. And then you can finish that off later with your uh, 220. Just make it like a smoother bulge rather than a knife edge. You can see how this is coming off the day pretty sharp edge. Now it's going to be all nice and smooth. Give it a little bit uh, better flow going from the transfers towards the plug because you want that fresh fuel to be coming in and getting into the plug area as quickly and as smoothly as possible so that uh, you get a better bang for the buck and the small amount of time you have to light it up and get the power out of it. with the knife action. Take some of your plumber's cord. It's the wrong gauge there. There we go. There's some 220. Then just get in there. Give it some sanding. Get any little divots you can put in there. on the outside there. basically it. The rest of that will come off. Uh, let me get in there and polish it up. I like to polish it up uh, uh, really nice and bright so it's uh, almost mir mirror finish. The uh, reason why you'd want to do that is because uh, the smoother it is the less there is carbon to catch on to so uh, it won't build up so quick. 
Also, if it's reflective, it's going to reflect the heat away from the head. Also, you have to do the same onto the, uh, to the crown of the piston. And then once you're reflecting all the heat away from those surfaces, uh, your heat is there to give you some power. And the excess heat goes scooting down the exhaust uh, where you want it to go, not uh, heat soaking the engine. So, get a good polish going. I got some uh, steel wall, medium grade. Nothing spectacular. Just bought from the hardware store. Uh, yeah, it works pretty good. So, just get her in there. It's really not, uh, not a high, pro high effort process. To get it, uh, to get it pretty. A lot of people, you know, they go oh, all sorts of strange things to get things happening as far as polishing it. But uh, this does, uh, this does the job pretty good. There we go. It's, uh, it's shiny.